Here we can see the brand new upcoming fleet carrier interiors for Elite Dangerous. This tour formed a part of a recent official livestream from Frontier. During the livestream, the developers detailed how the new interiors will work, so let's take a look at the new info. Fleet carrier interiors then are modular in nature. They do use a lot of existing assets, but there's also a number of new elements as well, and you will notice the new looking entryway from the ship hangar, which we are just leaving right there. Fleet carriers can have a number of services on board. These include Pioneer Supplies, the Bar, Vista Genomics, and the Shipyard. Now, for fleet carriers, each of these services will function slightly different to how they work when on stations and other locations. Starting with Pioneer Supplies, players will effectively be able to run their own shop. This will be a service that you can add to your carrier. Once added, the shop will be available to everyone who boards your carrier. The fleet carrier Pioneer Supplies will stock all types of weapons and suits. There won't just be a selection here like you can find on stations, they will actually stock the full range of items. So this means that players will be able to find everything in one place. So this might have you wondering how players will manage all of this stock, how will you actually manage all these various commodities? Well it turns out fleet carrier owners won't have to worry about that at all. Instead, basically the moment you open the store, every item will be available there, so there'll be no management of the stock at all to be concerned with. Instead, players will have control over the pricing point of sold items. They can be sold at cost, in which case the carrier will not make a profit from the Pioneer Supply Stores, or instead, players can sell the items with a marked up price, in which case the player, the players, the carrier owner, will be able to make a profit based on the percentage of that markup. Now, illegal items can also be sold at Pioneer Supplies, and this will basically come down to the player's choice. The fleet carrier owner will be able to enable or disable at the sale of illegal goods. Moving on to the fleet carrier bar. The bar will be completely different to the one found on the stations. For fleet carriers, the functionality of it at least, the bar will effectively work as a commodity market for on-foot oddity materials and resources. The bottom line here is that players will be able to sell oddity materials. The bartender will also be able to purchase the materials. Effectively, this opens up Odyssey material trading between players, something that has been long requested, and hopefully at some point in the future, Frontier will expand this to regular uh, engineering materials as well for Horizons. Vista Genomics, meanwhile, will work more or less in the same way as the version from stations. This will allow players to sell their biological data to fleet carriers, but due to the ease of access, the lack of risk of having to carry that data over long distances, so for example, if you're taking your fleet carrier into deep space, there'll be less of a risk because you won't have to carry that data back to uh, the central bubble. So to counteract this, the data will be purchased at a slightly reduced rate when on fleet carriers. And you can see that NPC there, that's the Vista Genomics NPC. You may remember on the fleet carriers for the management menu, you can actually fire and then rehire NPCs. If you rehire different NPCs, that will be represented in your fleet carrier interiors as the NPC will get swapped out. Fleet carrier interiors will also have a shipyard. We can see that right here. Interestingly, rather strangely, the uh, interior of the shipyards, the interior area for shipyards, will not have a shipyard vendor. So that kind of raises the question of what is the point of this particular shipyard as uh, maybe it doesn't serve some functionality, although there are some screens here, so I assume that means that ships can be uh, transferred in and swapped out from those screens. It's just a case that there's no NPC to actually purchase ships from. Right there on the screen, we can see the escape pods. That will allow you to use the escape pods and return to the previously accessed station. And this will be good in case you find yourself stuck on a fleet carrier that has traveled thousands upon thousands of light years and placed you in a lo remote location away from the bubble or where you previously wanted to be. So that would be a way to get back. And finally, we're here in the jump room. Sounds a bit of a strange name, perhaps. Uh, this, of course, is the area with all the big windows right at the front. We've also got the bridge up there, which is accessible. Uh, the jump room uh, is the area where you'll be able to uh, witness the uh, fleet carrier jump in action. Now, it sounds as though players will get a warning from the carrier when the carrier is about to jump. Any players on board will then have to make their way to a seat. Any players who don't make their way to a seat will instead be moved to that seat. I assume that means teleported to a seat. At Frontier implied that this is for law reasons, they don't want you splattered across the back of the wall was one uh, thing mentioned, which is absolutely a ridiculous law reason because if the uh, acceleration was enough to splash you against the back of the walls, you would instead splat against the rear of the seat, wouldn't you? But no, no matter, 
I think uh, what's actually going on here is that this is a technical reason. You have to be in a seat for the uh, jump to occur. And Frontier just didn't want to mention that. At least it seems that way. That seems the most uh, obvious reason there. Anyway, I'm really hoping that Frontier have made some great new visual sequence for this jump because the standard Witch Space Tunnel would be a huge lit down after such a bigger climax of sitting, sitting in a fantastic area like this. Frontier didn't reveal the jump on stream because they didn't want to spoil it, so that would have to wait for the fleet carrier release. Now up here, we've got access to the bridge. This will only be accessible to the fleet carrier owner as well as any people in his squad. Basically though, this gives the fleet carrier owner probably the best view of the jump overall. There's also a nice little private area up the back there where uh, the captain, the commander, will be able to use as a ready room and they're about to take their uh, squad members, their wing members, into that room with them if they so want. Now the fleet carrier interior update is now arriving with update 11. It was originally planned for update 10 but this has been moved back slightly and this will enable Frontier to use update 10 to fix a number of outstanding bugs. At least what they're, that's what they're saying. There's no other reasons given for the slight move back of the content here, but they say that will arrive in the early part of next year. Now, talking of bugs, a hotfix patch was released yesterday, patch 9.02, which fixed a number of bugs introduced with update 9. Most notably, it fixed the problems with scanning biological samples on planetary surfaces. The patch also was intended to fix the problem with fire groups, However, numerous players have said that the fire groups panel in their ships is still not working correctly even after the latest update. Frontier have said that they are aware of the problem but haven't given any more details on this or when to expect a full and proper fix. Moving on to other bugs, most significant but uh, gameplay at breaking bugs there unfortunately are still not fixed. Uh, this is the hostile ships that still do not correctly display on the radar. There was also no mention in the updated patch notes on whether the dead Odyssey NPCs can now be scanned. So whether or not these problems get fixed this year uh, is a case of, oh, it's a bit of a mystery, isn't it? We'll have to wait and see. Will they get fixed or will it have to wait for update 10? And if they have to wait for update 10, at what point will that arrive? The issue with being unable to see hostile ships on the radar is certainly a big problem. Frontier's lack of clear information on this problem is somewhat troubling, to say the least, but maybe they will give a further update before too much longer. At any rate, what we've seen here for the interiors for fleet carriers does look pretty nice. Uh, effectively, it's what could be classed as player housing, a play, uh, player's very own location that is their own. Now, I don't know how much you'll be able to customise this. Ideally, I think some people would like objects to place in here and other collectibles. But that aside at the moment, it will be possible to customise the colour palette in here. This will be able to be changed out uh, for other colours. Now, Frontier haven't said whether or not these will come as chargeable extras or whether they will be free. Uh, I suspect, though they will be a DLC that would have to purchase from the store with ARCs. But Frontier weren't willing to reveal details on that just yet, so again, another thing that we're going to have to wait and see. All in all though, a pretty good going. Uh, do let me know in the comments section below what you think of all this. I'd love to hear from you. As always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys and girls next time.